Glad you tuned in today. We want to read to you, first of all, from Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25. Heaviness or anxiety in the heart of a man maketh it stoop. Or one translation says, weighs him down. Mm -hmm. But a good word, an encouraging word, makes it glad. So make your heart glad. We're going to bring some encouraging words to you today. And we hope that you'll, your heart's wide open to it. All right, man. Well, hello. We just want to give you some thoughts today about how to resist fear some more and how to just spend time in the Lord's presence. And so one of the thoughts that I had today was comes from uh, the book of Acts 27, where Paul was in a, in a ship. Actually, he was, he was actually under arrest, and the whole ship was underneath, was under a big storm, and they wrapped the whole ship up, and he came and told, told all the men, he said, Men, you should, be, you should have obeyed me and not avoided all this pain and suffering. But an angel visited me last night, the angel of my God, the God I passionately serve. He came and stood in front of me, and he said, don't be afraid. And basically goes on to say how the ship was not, they, not no, no person was going to be lost, mm -hmm. but the ship would be destroyed. So I like that part about the uh, standby angel. Yes. And we can pray that over every one of us, that, Lord, wherever we go, into a grocery store, to pump our gas, to, you know, have to go to the doctor, I had to go to the doctors last week, and the whole time I'm just thanking the Lord that I'm safe and yeah. protected. It's good. So we can pray for our standby angels to come and stand by us to protect us. That's so good, because in Hebrews it says that they are ministering spirits sent to minister for those who are heirs of salvation. Now that doesn't mean the world people that don't know Jesus, but they're there for us. God's given us a unique privilege and right and inheritance yeah. to be able to cause angels to work on our behalf. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah, you really have to choose faith over fear. It's a choice. You're going to have you know, feelings of concern. We all have feelings of concern. But just choosing faith over fear, mm -hmm. you know, nothing wrong with getting back in your car and wiping your hands off with a Clorox wipe or something. But, but choosing faith would be saying, I'm still going to the store. I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna minister to people. I'm still gonna care. I'm still gonna help. Uh, to shrink back and lose our courage during this time would not be faith. That's true. You know, let me read uh, if I can from Ephesians chapter two. Wonderful passage of scripture about our covenant that we have, that really gives us a uniqueness. Something that the world doesn't have. Mm -hmm. It says here in uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens of the commonwealth of Israel, mm -hmm. and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. When I read this, I thought, wow, that's exactly what the secular world's going through right now. Yeah. The news media, they only know one source, one way to get out of this thing, and that is with by using uh, hydroxychloroquine and uh, a Z pack. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's fine. But I'm telling you that you and I have something different, something additional, yeah. because we're not without hope, we're not without the covenants of promise. We are not strangers from the covenants of promise. We have hope. We're not without God. And therefore, because of this covenant, coronavirus is under the curse. Yep. And we've been redeemed from that curse. Yeah, just to encourage you, uh, we talked about soaking last Sunday. Mm. And we just encourage you to get that podcast or, that, or go back to Facebook and uh, watch the video. It was, it was really good about how when you seek the Lord, I know Isaiah said, or Psalm 34 says, I sought the Lord and he heard me mm -hmm. and delivered me from all my fears. But you do have to do your part. You have to seek the Lord. Isaiah 26 says, he keeps you in perfect peace when your mind is stayed on him. Mm -hmm. Here again, we have a part to play in our peace level. That's right. And so soaking or basking in God's presence, whatever you want to call it, waiting on God, inquiring of the Lord, is a time when you just kind of kick back and you just throw your arms up and you just wait on him. Mm -hmm. Oh God, I praise you. Mm -hmm. I worship you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. And so you just wait on him. Now, you can do that lying on the floor. You can do that walking by a stream on a walking trail. Mm -hmm. 
You can do it in your bed at night, wherever it is. But one of the things that uh, Andrew Womack says is that this is going to increase a boldness in you. This is going to, your intimacy, your communion with him will conquer the fears yeah. in our lives. That's right. And so you really have to have a good grip, a good understanding on how much God is for you and loves you. Yes. He's not the author of sickness, of viruses, of disease. The only thing he can give us is good things because he's the author of good. So all good things come from him. That's true. So when we think about his love for us, uh, Psalms 23 says, mm -hmm. So why would I fear the future? For your goodness and love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence to be forever with you. Mm -hmm. So his love and his goodness pursues us. And what does that do? It drives away all of our fears. Mm -hmm. His perfect love casts out fear. Well, that's so good. And we know that this coronavirus is... I mean, ultimately, from the fall of man, yeah. you know, when plagues and viruses and calamity was unleashed at the fall of man. So, and the enemy influenced their rebellion, so we can say, yeah, the enemy's behind this thing. And we know it because John 10.10 10 says that the thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. What's it doing? Destroying. So what did Jesus say? I am come that you might have life in abundance to the full, until it overflows. So Jesus is the remedy. And we can look to him and know that we've been fully redeemed from that curse, that Jesus has provided a way that we, that does not have to touch us. And so center in on his love for you. And that perfect love, like Matt said, will cast out all fear. Yeah, we, we see in the scripture in the first John 4 that God is love. And when you're in God, you're in love. I'll just read the verse real quick. We have come into an intimate experience with God's love. This is the Passion Translation. And we trust in the love He has for us. God is love. Those who are living in love are living in God. And God lives through them. Mm -hmm. So when you experience that love, and He's actually operating in you and through you, so when you feel that temptation to be fearful or to be overly concerned, which moves us into worry, yeah. and fret and dread. Uh, when we get into that place of receiving his love, it'll drive out those other uh, attacks, those other feelings. That That's right. Him. That's right. The Bible tells us in Timothy, I believe it's uh, 2 Timothy 3.1, that in the last days there will be perilous times. And But Jesus is here to carry us through those perilous times. The angels that Matt was talking about, those angels are here to carry you through those perilous times. The promises of God are still valid today, even though we're in the end times for the Christian, for the believer, not for the world now. In fact, if I can throw this in here, I was studying today about the plagues in the Old Testament, Numbers and so forth, 2 Samuel. And in every situation where there was a plague and it killed thousands of people, it was because of them not being in God or serving God or not being fully committed to him. And so this is a time for the world to repent because whenever they repented and whenever there was a sacrifice made or an atonement for the people's sins, the plagues stopped. They were not killing people anymore. So if you're out there today and you're not serving Jesus, now's a good time to repent. Get your heart right with him. Press into God and say, I want to make Jesus the absolute Lord of my life. I want to be under that covenant. I want to be redeemed from the curse. Yeah. And I want to have this love that Matt was talking about. Yeah, I have no problem sleeping at night. But it doesn't mean that I don't seek the Lord. And I don't spend time asking for him to bring me peace. So we have a part to play and then we receive his peace. Mm -hmm. That's so it. just a couple of things as we close out today. Uh, we have some, some people have donated some food to our church. For, for people that need it. So if you are in need of food, you can feel free to call the church at 724-752-9575. We've been able to bless eight or so families already. And so we can even possibly deliver it. So contact the church. We'd love to help. We're here for you guys. And also we plan on having an Easter service, a drive-in Easter service on April 12th, which is coming up pretty quick. 
and we're, we're just going to 10 o'clock just drive your car up to the front of the building we're going to have a stage set up have some worship and you'll just tune in your fm radio you'll be able to hear everything with even with your windows up you'll be able to hear everything real good and we'll smile at you and you'll smile at us and if you're all if you want to say amen just Honk your horn. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, no one will be in any danger. You keep your windows up, and we, there's not won't be any contact with anybody. And uh, incidentally, if you'd like to give to the church, Word of Life Church, you can just make out a check and send it to P.O. Box 622, Elwood City. Yeah. So, I mean, some people are giving online, but uh, some may, may want to just do it by snail mail. And just, uh, so once again... We're at Live Church, P.O. Box 622, Elwood City, uh, 16117. Very simple. So thanks so much, but uh, Matt, maybe we ought to talk to him a little bit about if there's anybody that's out there away from God, now's a good time to get back and how they can do that. Yeah. So like I said before, God is love. You're never a lost case. You, you are not a failure. Uh, he, he forgives us. The Bible says 70 times 7. So as we come to him and repent and just turn from any wicked way, the Bible says he will come and receive us. So I just encourage you to pray this prayer with, pray, pray this prayer with us and just accept and return and come to him. That's right. And receive his forgiveness, receive his salvation. So say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I repent. I repent. I did wrong. I did wrong. In your sight. In your sight. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive me. And I'm coming home. And I'm coming home. I receive all that you have for me. I receive all that you have for me. That great, awesome plan. That great, awesome plan. For my life. For my life. I believe. I believe. That you are. That you are. The way, the truth. The way, the truth. And the light. And the light. So I come to you. So I come to you. And say, I want to be your child. Say, I want to be your child. And I want you to be my father. And I want you to be my father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and you meant that in your heart, you are a new creation in Christ. You now have a passport to paradise, mm -hmm. a citizenship in heaven. Mm -hmm. Your sins are washed away, and you're a brand new creation in Christ. So thanks for tuning in. God bless. Have a great day.